Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltiasGaming.com. You probably reached 50 in the Elder Scrolls Online and absolutely clueless what to do. Great, this video is for you. I'm going to give you some priorities to work on your character and max your time and effectiveness inside the game. Starts with optimizing your character's skills, gear, and champion points, but where do you start? Thankfully, I've done this a lot. Let's get started. And if you like this type of content, hit that like, subscribe for more, because I'll keep cranking them out. Okay, you've hit level 50. Typically in other MMOs and in this game, people think gear, 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 gear. And that is somewhat true, but not so fast. You really need to work on optimizing your character's performance and power without any gear. Dealt to you, how do you do this? Skills and passives. What you need to prioritize is leveling your character's class skill lines, armor, weapons, undaunted, and even alchemy. When I talk to people that are new players, they don't understand this principle. But if we look at something like this, restoring spirit reduces the health magic is stamina and ultimate cost of your abilities by five percent you'll notice this passive does not have any proc effect it doesn't require ability to be slotted it's just given to you taking this passive that's why you got to level up and max out those class passives some other ones you're going to want to work on doing is weapons armor guild including fighters mages sigic and undaunted undaunted is probably the most important because these passives are so dang strong here undaunted command and undaunted metal and does doesn't require you to do anything and that you're gonna have to do a lot of dungeons for alliance war even if you don't plan on pvp and doing cyrodiil or anything it's worth doing because these ultimates are frequently used in pve especially for tanks and healers obviously race is a no-brainer and alchemy even leveling this up to get a medicinal use resulting in potions lasting 30 percent longer including the major buffs you get from drinking this like recovery weapon or spell damage or even critical so your number one priority out the gate isn't actually collecting a bunch of gear it's getting a bunch of skill points leveling up these skill lines and optimizing your character's power without even equipping any gear okay how do you get a bunch of skill points right away public dungeons they have one boss inside of them that if you kill it will get a new skill point along with the sky shards do that hop from zone to zone to zone if you can collecting the sky shard along with the skill points from killing this and even one in cold harbor giving you a lot of skill points out the gate while you're working on the priorities of optimizing your character without gear this is what gear looks like in elder scrolls online in game the far right thing you'll notice it says cp 160 so you need to get to champion point level 160 before you spend a lot of time collecting your gear and crafting it otherwise you're gonna have to do it all over again thankfully reaching champion point 160 is gonna be really easy because you're gonna start earning cp at level 50 and beyond another thing you're gonna want to prioritize is doing the dungeons this is gonna level up your undaunted if you're a brand new player and don't know the mechanics of the game you can run normal Normal. So here's all the achievements for running the normal group dungeons. You can do this in the dungeon finder in the group tab. You go to dungeon finder here. Random normal is your best bet to do once a day. It's going to give you a transmute stones, which are very useful and kind of an end game currency to retrace and optimize gear and reconstruct it. Also going to give you just a whole mess of experience points. So it's worth doing that once a day. If you like PVP, battlegrounds are also worth doing once a day because of that huge XP boost really helps help you get to champion point level especially if you don't like grinding zombies or mobs over and over also the dungeon finder is quite useful because you do get some decent gear and you want to add it to your collections and what it allows you to do is pick up these item sets and kind of store them in this and then use those transmutes to reconstruct them as the right proper trait so those dungeons and doing those normals that doesn't matter if it's veteran or if it's normal and you can see right here dungeons there is no random veteran version of drew king slayer the only veteran thing that really applies is the monster helm will drop from veteran so i recommend is doing the normal dungeon every day and then i would start working on doing the group dungeons especially if you're a new player before you even touch veteran if you go to your map here and we go to the first zone in daggerfall covenant i start with spindle clutch one and i complete that and then it unlocks the exact same dungeon kind of level and mechanics here in stonefall so over here would be fungal grotto one same thing in the aldemary dominion you're gonna bang those out and then go from zone to 
zone to zone, they kind of ramp up in difficulty. If you do that, you're going to have a ton of experience if you do this because there's a quest turn in along with completing the randoms, you're going to get a lot of experience and a lot of skill points, which is exactly what you need when you start this. If you come to the group and activity finder, you can actually queue up for the specific ones or with companions, you can solo a couple of them pretty easily with normal. And I've soloed a bunch of them on veteran. Now that you have some group activities to do, you're farming up. Now you're going to get the champion point 160 or higher. That's going to allow you to work on gear next. When you get to gear, excluding mythic items, the common loadout for folks is two five piece sets with a monster helm, which is a two piece. Set. If we look at something like this, this is a Zahn's monster helm. Monster helms themselves drop from the final boss, RNG, random weight and trait doing the veteran versions of the dungeon. So normals will not drop this. Here's where you can get the undaunted shoulders. So at level 45, you get a male inviting you to do the undaunted quest line. You can also unlock the undaunted skill line from the tavern in the starter zone. And you'll come here to the undaunted enclave. You'll do an initial quest and you'll have these three quest givers. The two quest givers with the little arrows above them give a really easy dungeon quest that you can do. And the final one gives you a DLC, downloadable content. Typically, these are much, much harder. So if you're a brand new player and don't know the mechanics, but you've hit CP 160, I would actually avoid the DLC dungeons unless you have a team with you very familiar. And in fact, you won't be able to queue or do some of them until you reach at least champion point level 300. But you're going to want to collect these every day and work on getting a monster helm priority number one, along with the shoulder. As a new player, what I would do is come over here to the very beginning one. These are going to be actually quite useful and relevant in this patch or next. Resource sustaining ones with Sentinel uh, of Razakum and Engine Guardian, a decent damage one with Mob the Inferno and Shadow Ren, Chokethorn, Night Flame for healing, Spawn of Mephalias and Crags is a great stamina DPS, Swarm Mothers, Blood Spawn, really good tanks, and Slime Crawl and Scour uh, Scourge Harvest are also really good. So what I would recommend doing, taking your five or so keys, throwing them into this specific one. It's going to have the whole loot table, but you're going to get something and then be reliably easy to go actually complete that veteran dungeon. Then I focus on the two five-piece sets. All right, Great Deltia, what five-piece sets do I go with? Well, thankfully, I don't know when you're watching watching this video, but in the future, Deadlands Update 32, the gear is going to be homogenized, meaning if something gives you spell critical, it will give you weapon critical. In fact, there will actually be just critical rating. Same thing with something that gives you weapon damage will also give you spell damage. It'll just be weapon and spell damage. So the gear sets are much easy to obtain. Why Overland is so relevant is because you can get it straight away. These gear sets can also be obtained from traders, and they're very, very cheap. So you want to get two five pieces and a monster helm, and the one I'm in right now is in Deshaun. The one I would recommend getting straight away is here in Deshaun. So Deshaun has something called Mother Sorrows. And you can see it here. It gives spell critical. But in the future, it will give weapon and spell critical, meaning just critical rating. This is going to be great as a PvE starter set. So magic users are going to want to put this on your body. Then you can get that critical rating at all times. Where stamina users are going to want to put this on your jewelry and your weapons. Both weapons, whatever you go with, 2H, dual wield, bow, sword and shield, whatever. Ever. You don't know how you get this, you just complete things in the zone. So delves, dolmens, world bosses, and this is the, the and Deshaun is part of the base game, so it's very easy to get a hold of. Next up, I would I recommend getting another overland set, and that's Briarheart. This is commonly used for stamina builds, but with the homogenization, the hybridization of gear sets coming up, this is gonna be fantastic because you can see doing critical damage. Well, you're gonna have high crit wearing Mother Sorrow, increases your weapon damage, and will include uh, spell damage for 10 seconds and very, very important, it's going to heal you while you're doing critical strikes during this window. It doesn't have 100% uptime, but this is very friendly for new players and something I actually use at endgame or as a new player because the healing and the weapon damage, which will soon be spell damage, is so strong. So you slap a five piece on there, you slap another five piece on, and you should have a monster helm and a shoulder. That will allow you to complete most of the veteran dungeons and start working on the DLC dungeons. Now you have kind of two branching arcs that you can work on. One is PvE, player versus environment. The other is PvP, player versus player. If we take a look at Craghorn here, it's a good example of what you can expect for endgame PvE in the Elder Scrolls Online. One is dungeons. Falk Reef Hold here, this is the symbol for it. I have not completed it. You can complete it on normal, you can complete it on a veteran, and you can complete it on a veteran with a hard mode and collect a lot of cool achievements and gear. These are for four player. And you can also do something called arenas. Here up here in Craghorn is Dragonstar Arena, a little bit older content but still worth doing because some of the gear sets are relevant today. You also 
have solo arenas in Arsenium here up at the top. You have solo arenas like Rothgar. Coming here, you have Veteran Maelstrom Arena. Very, very good weapons to get a hold of. And you also have another one here on the Reach, which is called Vatishram. Also very good weapons to get a hold of. Moreover, you have something like Trials, Ethereum Archive. It's an old Kragorn Trial, so it's something that's very easy, very easy to get a hold of and still has decent gear. Typically, if you don't have a guild to run this, a lot of people will sit here at Belkarth and Kragorn and solicit for people to run with them. And this is a good place to start because a lot of people are friendly that's pickup groups it's not super intensive you can run dungeons and or trials but start here in Belkarth Kragorn you'd be surprised how easy it is to get in a group and then if you don't know kind of the end game meta like the big picture what's the hardest nastiest content to complete well it's trials 12 player in Rock Grove currently is probably one of the hardest so you can do veteran and you can do a hard mode on it and ironically it has some of the best gear for tanks healers and DPS you can get that gear running at normal in fact if we go here here to our collections tab you can go down to the trial and find out for yourself by clicking rock grove this requires a chapter of blackwood but you'll see bahase's really good magic dps set but you don't need the perfective i don't even have it i don't even have veteran but i still got the normal version because it's just so much easier to get that you can pick up and pit pug it and what the perfected gives you is just a little bit extra spell damage which is really nice if you're trying to push the top end dps but for me i just like the five piece because i still get the effect and that's the important thing Thing. Consider doing the trials, the dungeons, and the arenas on normal if you have to. If you're a PvP or an endgame, what do you do here? Well, Seardale is primarily the number one source of endgame, and it's in the center of the map, and you click down on here, and it's Seardale. Kind of the number one thing folks go after is Emperor. So that is the inner circle keeps. If your faction captures all of them at once, the person with the highest alliance points becomes Emperor until all of them are not your faction and you get dethroned. It's probably the best experience I've ever had in a video game, period. PvE or PvP, becoming Emperor is so dang fun and it's very, very challenging to do. Another thing you can do is Imperial City. So actually it's a separate queue in the Alliance War tab, hitting the L key on PC, you'll see here if I come here this is the alliances here alliance lock standard below and then you have imperial city and on the map it looks like this right in the center you come in here and there's going to be two versions of it the top where you can flip the flags and then the bottom you can collect sky shards and it's a pve slash pvp environment typically high-end pvpers come here to farm mats kill other people and collect Telvar, which is used to get expensive mats, flip it and sell it and make gold. Consider IC a bit more difficult. Sometimes it's dead and you can make a lot of money here, especially if you're good at PvP. Battlegrounds here, you can queue randomly and get a taste of it. These are 4v4v4 and I highly, highly recommend not doing an end game as a new player. I would get a taste of these at the beginning of the game when it's not as serious because you get to the end game, there's a very little crowd that actually does battlegrounds including myself and typically people are highly skilled have tons of gear and thousands of hours pvp in the elder scrolls line trust me you do not want to go up against these people so i'd recommend doing it when you're level 20 30 farting around and get a taste it's really fast paced and action the downside of battlegrounds is currently as i'm making this video there's not a whole lot of incentives there's very little collectible so typically what people do is hang out in cyrodiil farming alliance points and use it to buy certain things or do telvar in imperial city and that's kind of the end game loop and content for pvpers you need to do both frankly because pveers if you have no intention of doing pvp you're still going to want to get access to aggressive warhorn for a tank or a healer you're still going to want to have access of, to barrier and some of these skills and you don't have to worry about maxing these out so much pvpers are going to want to do pve because you have to collect the gear elder scrolls online does not separate it that way so in this game you're probably going to have to do both while you're focusing on one for a patch or the entirety of your gameplay so i hope you got something out of this video and it's a little bit more clear what you should focus on priority wise for you and your character to get the most out of the game i also have other videos for beginner tank healer and dps gear so if you're interested in that look in the link in the description below it'll have those videos listed thanks for watching